welcome to another edition of My Health Matters. I am Shay Brown Brown, um, family nurse practitioner, plant based nutritionist, um, personal trainer, um, obesity management specialist, uh, medical cannabis provider, and I am the host of the show tonight. And we have here with us a licensed therapist, our, um, our Nisha Woods, with us tonight. We also have a very, very, very special guest with us tonight. Um, she is here with us tonight, but you know what? We are going to bring her on just a little bit later. Um, we are going to be talking about age is nothing but a number, okay? We are here to talk about the process of aging, okay? I was thinking of a title uh, to have for our show, and I wanted to talk about the health disparities, but you know, is it really a disparity? Um, I'm thinking of more of health precautions as we get older. Uh, the disparities that can be sometimes hmm, self-inflicted. Precautions are things that you want to be aware of as you get older. Um, when you get older, you want to be aware of things such as um, different types of cancers that you want to make sure that you're being screened for. Um, another precaution can be um, as you get older, um, your immune system, you know, um, your immune system can become weakened at times. What are things that you do when the immune system becomes weakened? Um, another precaution can be um, hip fractures, okay? These are other precautions, not things that can happen. I mean, not things that will happen, just precautions. So we don't wanna talk about disparities because we know a lady <laughs> that is 86 years old and she has been taking a lot of precautions to her own health. And being that she has taken a lot of precautions to her own health, hmm, she doesn't have very many health disparities. So I kind of like that idea. Let's pay attention to the precautions instead of the disparities. And that way we can have a, what I like to say, a better quality of life. So, um, before I bring her on, I want to tell you a little bit about this lady, okay? Now, this little lady, I've already told you her age, and I had to write this stuff down because she has been everywhere. She has done almost everything, okay? So we have here with us a very beautiful lady. You guys know her as Ernestine Shepherd, but I know her as Mama E, okay? I can say that when I first met Ernestine Shepherd, I was floored and I didn't know what to do. I met her, believe it or not, at a race at the Baltimore Women's Classic Race back in, I believe it was 2013. That's just how long I've known this lady, 10 years. Well, nine years. And I saw her on YouTube and I was just amazed how old she was and how beautiful she looked. And I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, this is the way I wanna be when I get older, not old, mind you, okay? Older, because I know some young people that are old. <laughs> they have a lot of old people diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, strokes, 39, 20s, 40s, okay? Those kind of things. So. Um, right then and there, when I saw her on YouTube, I was just so amazed by her. And then when I saw her at the Baltimore Women's Classic Run, I was like, oh my God. And then when I walked up to her, I was like, she is an icon. I don't know how she's going to accept me. Believe it or not, she gave me a hug and she was like happy to see me like I was a, a, a legend or something. She's the legend. <laughs> then she gave me her number and I'm like, she want me to call her. And I'm like, she was the sweetest ever, invited me to the gym to work out with her. I mean, that's just the kind of person that she is. She loves everyone. So after I met her at the um, Baltimore Classic race, I said, well, this little older lady, I'm going to her gym. I'm like, she can't hurt me. I'm Shade Brown Brown. I'm the poster child for better health. Woo, boy, <laughs> well, I tell you. I got to her gym and she did things to me. She burned my butt. 
literally burned my butt. I was so sore when I left that gym. I'm like, and you know, she did the same exercises that I was doing. So I'm like, okay, you will not go to the front of the class. The next time you're going to go to the back of the class because I'm like, you cannot do this again. <laughs> you cannot. And I'm like, I wanted to stop, but I'm like, I'm in the front of the class. And I'm like, her class is like 50 and older. Now, mind you, I was like in my 40s. Her class is 50, 60, 70s and older. And I'm just this young buck in her class. I'm thinking I'm a young buck. And these older women, I can't call them old because I wasn't hanging with them. <laughs> hanging. I was embarrassed. So I'm like, oh, should I go back? I know you guys know me. If anybody knows Shay Brown Brown, you know I'm not a punk. I'm going back. <laughs> Jeez, I went back again. She did something different. <laughs> she got me again. I said, this older lady is killing me. So I fell in love with her. I did. And she became my mother of fitness. All right. Because I look up to her. I look up to her because she is the poster child. She is the mother of fitness to me. She is how I want to grow older, not old. Because don't you think that she's old? Not by any means necessary. Most of you that are out here viewing this right now, you're old. She's not. She is not. So, all right, that's enough about me and my experiences with my Ernestine Shepherd. So let me tell you a little bit about her, okay? This little lady, Ernestine Shepherd, she has, she is the world's oldest living female competitive bodybuilder for the Guinness's, um, Guinness's Book of World Records. She is, um, she's been on Ripley's Believe It or Not. She is um, in Beyonce's um, video, My Power. That little lady you see there holding her muscles up like this. That's Ernestine Shepherd. Yes, that's her. Mm -hmm. Um, she's been on the Anderson Cooper show. She's been on Steve Harvey. She's been on AM Baltimore, Entertainment Tonight, um, um, Hoda, I think it's Hoda and Jenna. Um, it, did I pronounce that right, Ar Arnisha? I think you did. Yes. Okay. Um, she's been taped with National Geographic and I was being, I look, I, I was a part of that. So I hope they have like a good, my good side. <laughs> She's been on the Dr. Phil show. I saw that show. She's been on Dr. Oz. She's been on the Harry um, Connick Jr. show. She's been everywhere, okay? And I know this little lady. I know how busy she is. And would you guys believe that she actually made had time to make a song? Would you believe that? Yes. Ernestine Shepard had time to make a song. And I'm going to play a little bit of this song before I bring her out. I'm going to bring her out as I play her song. And you can hear her in the back, sound like she's working somebody out. And I'm gonna um, give you guys the, the link to where you guys can purchase her motivational song because I already purchased it. And that's one of my songs that I listen to as I'm running. So as I'm running the Baltimore uh, Running Festival this Saturday, Ernestine Shepherd will be in my ears as I'm running. So you guys check out her song. So we welcome Miss Ernestine Shepherd. Yes. Welcome. Welcome, Mama Ernestine Shepherd, to our show. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be a part of our show tonight. We know that you are getting up first thing in the morning. So we are not going to hold you up too long. So thank you so much for being a part of our show today. Thank you for having me. And I tell you, I just love, love sitting here listening to all of the things that you said and then i have so many things that i would like to pass on to others but shay before i do that i always have to have a prayer mm. is that all right with you i was hoping that you would 
Oh, thank you. This is a prayer that I say every morning. It's called Illuminata. And it goes this way. Dear God, I give this day to you. May my mind stay centered on the things of spirit. May I not be tempted to stray from love. As I begin this day, I open to receive you. Please enter where you already abide. May my mind and heart be pure and true. And may I not deviate from the things of goodness. May I see the love and innocence in all mankind behind the masks we all wear and the illusions of the worldly plane. I surrender to you my doings this day. I ask only that they serve you and the healing of the world. May I bring your love and goodness with me to give unto others wherever I go. Make me the person you would have me be. Direct my footsteps and show me what you would have me to do. Make the world a safer, more beautiful place. Bless all your creatures. Heal us all and use me, dear Lord, that I might know the joy of being used by you. Amen. 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 And this, is there something else that you always do, my Ernest Sting? I, I know you have like your mantra, but there is something else you do. Oh, I have a creed that I live by. And this creed was written by Christian D. Lawson. And it goes this way. And notice, I have all of these things on plaques because I like to walk around and read them. And this goes this way. I promise myself to be so strong that nothing can disturb my peace of mind. To talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person I meet. To make all my friends feel that there is something worthwhile in them. To think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as I am about my own. To forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. And this is something that I do all the time. To wear a cheerful expression at all times and give a smile to every living creature I meet. To give so much time in improving myself that I have no time whatsoever to criticize others to be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble, to think well of my life and to proclaim this fact to the world, not in loud words, but in great deeds, to live in the faith that the whole world is on my side so long as I am true to the best that is in me. This is what I read every day. And one more thing, Jay. Yes. I'd like to tell you this. This little quote comes from a movie star. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And it goes this way. 
for beautiful eyes. Always look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, only speak words of kindness. For poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never, ever alone. And I love that. You know, I love that too. And every time we have our walks on Saturday, our monthly walks, and you say that, I love to hear you say that because it, it, it reminds me to look at people differently. It reminds me to humble myself and to, to view people. Um, we all make mistakes. Yes. And just to always be kind to people. You never know what they're going through. So I really appreciate you saying that. So you never know who you might be touching by saying that. So you always touch me by saying that. So I truly appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, I truly appreciate that. So mama, you, you, you're getting me all sentimental, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> where do you live? Because people do not know where you live. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. And how long have you lived in Baltimore? All of my 86 years. 86 years you've been in Baltimore? You know, people don't yes. know you live in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I know they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been living in Baltimore for 86 years. And do you do you have your, your, all of your families here as well? Yes. All of my family is here also. Okay. So I do remember um, that we did a, a special walk a couple of years ago. I think it was a couple of years ago for your husband. Do you want to tell us about that? Oh, my goodness. That was so wonderful. He was so surprised. And that walk. He just, all he could do was just smile. And all of the people who came out, I was shocked. I had no idea we would have the amount of people to come out and walk the way that they did. Mm -hmm. And everyone had fun. And I think we had something to eat afterwards, didn't we? Yes, man, we did. Yes, Keisha always brings something. Your, your niece, yes. she always brings something for us. A special watermelon cake for you. Oh, delicious. Absolutely. And healthy. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, this walking that you do, this is something you do monthly. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes, I do. I started this walk about in July of 2013, yes. And we started walking from up at the gym and then we came to the park mm -hmm. and each week we would walk. Then finally, my fitness son heard about the walk and he says, mama, I would like to come and join the walk and help you with this walk. Okay. He couldn't have done a better thing. There were so many people that came to walk. He had a doctor from the hospital, uh, people from uh, the cancer uh, association would come out mm -hmm. and would walk three miles and everyone Everyone walked and they enjoyed it. I think one time we had, if I'm not exaggerating, we had over 300 people because they came from by the bus, train, everywhere. I was just really thrilled. And then as usual, after the walk, we always had pictures taken and gosh, we always had a prayer. We never do anything without praying. That is very, very important. Everyone. We think it's wonderful what we do. And then they talk about cancer. 
so many different ailments and it helps so many people. Absolutely. What a joy. Absolutely. As we're talking about the walks, you're 86 years old. How do you get out the bed? <laughs> well, first of all, I go to bed early. I'm usually in bed no later than nine o'clock. I say my prayers and next thing you know, I am asleep and I awaken every morning at 3 a.m. I have my devotions. I love to sing. I'll sing a hymn. And then after I do my hymn, then I'll come down and have my breakfast. Then I go back upstairs and I get dressed and I get in my car. Mind you, I'm still driving. I get in my car and I drive to the gym and I get to the gym about 6.30 and my class starts at 7.00. That's at U Fit Gym in Randallstown. So the seven o'clock class, I'm doing my training and helping others on the floor, on the main floor to do their training. After that class is over, at nine o'clock, my sweat and sculpt class starts. That's from nine until 10. And I tell you, we do so many exercises and the ladies really work hard. It's a joy to see them do the things that they do. Now, when we have new people coming in, I tell them, don't worry if you can't do everything. Just keep coming back and it will get better and better and better. And I always tell them, and they notice it, on all of my exercise clothes, I have my mantra, and it is determined, dedicated, disciplined to be fit. And if you follow those three Ds, you can actually really do various exercises. It's, it's important mm -hmm. because you need to be determined, Absolutely. dedicated, and disciplined. Anything else, Shay? The women that you work out with in the gym, um, what are their ages? The ages of the people, um, let's see. I did have one young lady that was 48, and then I have another one that's 55, and then they go right up into age. And I have one lady who is 89 years of age, and Whoa. she does very well. Whoa, that is an older lady. And yes. these ladies, they're, they're mobile, they're moving. I mean, yes. they're not like, they're mobile. They have a lot of life in them. They most certainly do. And they want to move. They do. Absolutely. It's just yeah. so wonderful. And I want you to know that when they come to class, they look so nice. They all come in in their outfits, their exercise outfits. Mm -hmm. And they may have determined, dedicated discipline on their shirts. And I tell you, they're just smiling the whole time. Absolutely. They have to smile working out with you. You're such an inspiration to people. You know, we have a question from the audience. Okay. Uh, and, and Natalie um, Southwell, she has a question. She wants to know what wisdom would you give to someone in their 50s who's trying to build for the first time and to change their diet regimen. I mean, a diet regimen, I mean, that one I would say instead of a diet, change your lifestyle instead of a diet. But we're gonna have 
my esteem really elaborate elaborate on that a little bit more okay when a person comes to me and they say i have never exercised before and i'm 50 years of age do you think that i'll be able to get in your class and exercise well first of all i will say to them do you have any aches or pain and if they say no i'll say well have you been to your doctor first because i prefer that you go to the doctor and bring back a report and let me know what you can do and what you cannot do because that is very important because i wouldn't want anyone to come work out with me and to be doing shoulders and have something wrong with their shoulder and i've been training people for over 30 years and i thank the lord that not one of my people have been injured because i care about each and every one of them so then when i find out that they are healthy then they'll come in and then they don't use heavy weights we use light weights in the beginning and when you're using light weights your weights are no more than 2 pounds but we do a lot of repetitions mm -hmm. and that won't hurt a person at all mm -hmm. then i will ask them how are they eating are they drinking plenty of water and they'll tell me either yes or no but i feel that to drink a gallon of water in the beginning is a bit too much for the system. So I will tell them to start off if they can with four 16 ounce bottles of water. And that's equivalent to a half a gallon. Mm -hmm. So if you were to get up and eat your breakfast, after you eat your breakfast, you drink that one bottle of water. Then you'll come to the gym and you'll also bring some water with you. And then you'll drink most of that. Then when you go home and you're having your lunch, you'll drink water again. There you are, that's three bottles of water. And then before you go to bed, you drink that other bottle of water and you've had four bottles of water. Okay. And then you want to make certain that the foods that you eat are healthy. Now, what I do, I drink liquid egg whites. I get them from Egg Whites International. And I drink four glasses of liquid egg white a day. The last one is before I go to bed. Then I eat a tablespoon of nuts, walnuts, which is very important. And then I will also have oatmeal. And I also like a little fruit. That is my breakfast. And then I get ready and I pack my water or my glutamine select and I go to the gym. And while I'm working out, I'm drinking my glutamine select and my water. And I want to make sure I'm answering your question. Did I answer what you want? If not, I'll go back. It sounds like you answered that question. And then 
LaVesta had a question about how much water you should be drinking. And you answered that question too, without even um, looking at that question. So you answered both questions at the same time. We also have another question for you as well. Um, and that this question I was getting ready to ask you about your online classes. They want to know, do you offer, Natalie um, Southwell want to know, do you offer online classes for those who do not live in Baltimore and are willing to start training with you? Oh my goodness. Yes, I do. I have online classes. My classes are on Saturday, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the classes last for an hour. We do stretching. It's very important to do your stretching first. Then after you do your stretching, then we do our core muscles. We do upper, lower, and the obliques. Then we work chest, back, every part of the body. And we have a wonderful time. In the beginning, sometimes it's difficult for some of them to catch on. But then as they keep coming, it gets better and better and better. And I tell them, we're not looking for big muscles. We don't want to look like a man. We want to look feminine. And I do not have big muscles. What I have are just the shape of the muscle so that when others see me, they too know that they can achieve the same thing. So I don't train my people to look like men. I want them to be strong and healthy. Did I answer that? Yes, ma'am, you did. You did. Um, we have another question for you um, from Christine Lee. I don't know if you put up the link for the egg whites that you drink. I know Andrea is there with you. Um, if she has, like, if you have that information and Andrea could text that information to me, I can put it in the um, information here and, and post the link for the egg whites that you um, that you drink for Miss okay. um, Christine. Okay. okay. And, with the, and with the egg whites, they give you um, a shirt and uh, shorts. They're, they're really nice things that they give you. They draw the paper on top of the cabinet when you go down the steps. It's mm -hmm. a paper that says egg whites. You'll see it on the top shelf. And I can, um, oh, he would love to hear this with you ladies calling him. And the egg whites are delicious. <laughs> you can mix it with milk, uh, right. fruit, you know, but I do mine like Sylvester Stallone. I just gulp mine down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have another question. Um, I'm sorry. What you to me select? Yeah, I was going, I'm like, I was trying to, um, DeStefano, <laughs> yes, what is, glute, what, what is glutamine select? Yes. Okay, I'll have her bring that in for you. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And then we have another question from um, Ms. Cynthia. How many meals do you eat a day and do you believe in intermittent fasting? I eat exactly five meals a day. And I don't do any intermittent fasting, not at all. Bring me the glutamine select on the table. I'll get that for. Oh, bring me the Uh huh. Please. Thank you. Can you see that? I don't know whether you can see this. Thank you, Drea. Yep, that's perfect. Bring it down a little bit more. Turn, turn, turn. The other way. Yep, perfect. There we go. I think that's, is that Beverly Glutamine Select? It's yes. Beverly International. Mm -hmm. Beverly International? Yes. All right, I'm and gonna it gives you the strength, like when I'm out running, uh, it helps me to have strength. I put two bottles on my belt and I run and drink that. 
Then when I'm lifting weights too, I carry this up. It has, um, let's see. What are you trying to look for, Mom? I'm, I'm trying to see how many. You use the serving size is one scoop and um, you mix it with water. And uh, the ingredients is black, cherry flavor, citric acid, beet color, and I can see the other ones. It's black natural cherry flavor, citric acid, malic acid, beet color, Gugger gum, Acadia gum, silicon dioxide, and too close, close. I'm not. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And then neotane. But this is truly delicious. Yes, I could vouch for that one. This Thank you. Thank delicious. you, Grant. Yes. But I'm gonna get that number for. Um, you want for? Um, she, you can get it on your phone. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we want to talk about um, other things, my understanding. Um, we know that you are like one of the strongest women that we know. Okay. We've seen you. I mean, I know I've seen you ever. I've seen you at your highs. I've seen you at your lows. Uh, we've laughed together. We've cried together. I mean, we have done so many things together. Yes, we have. And I don't think that many people, um, when they see a person that is strong, they never stop to say, hey, are you okay? Uh, Ma Ernestine has been married, I believe, for what, 65 years, Ma? 65 years. Yes, ma'am. And um, she lost her husband back in 2019. Yes, ma'am. 2019. I remember when we all wore yellow for that. That was absolutely yes. 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 Um, that was a that was a very stressful time for my Ernestine, and that was a time to where I was like I had to switch from her being my Ernestine, the bodybuilder, to her just being Ernie, and she needs her children. She needs her fitness children. She needs her friends. She needs her family. She needs us because she was like going through. And again, she put her face on, but behind her face, you knew that she was hurting. And I'm like, how does she do it? And and I, I, I would always say, mom, you don't have to put that face on with me. That's you know? right. And she took the face off. And when she, she took did. the face off, we sat on that little pretty little couch that she had back there and she put that put her head right on my shoulder and she just cried. Okay. Tell us about that time because I want our Nisha to talk about how older people, the loss that they go through and the anxiety and the depression that they go through because People see Ernestine Shepherd as being this strong person, but I want people to really understand the whole picture of Ernestine Shepherd on this show. Ma, can you elaborate on that for us, please? Yes, I'm gonna tell you something from the beginning. Um, my husband um, suffered with pseudo gout. I don't know whether anyone knows what that is. Pseudo gout attacks the entire body. You get to the place that you cannot walk, you can't stand, you can't use your arms. So my son and I kept him home with us. We had him in the bed. We had him, had the steps. What do you call those steps? Oh, the stairs. We had the stair steps put in so that we could bring him downstairs. We had everything to make him comfortable. But then toward the last, he got so sick, we had to call the ambulance and take him to the hospital. Going to the hospital, he said, Teeny, 
I want you to continue what you are doing. If anything happens to me, promise me that you won't stop. So I told him I wouldn't stop. But after that funeral, it just seemed like everything changed because he did everything for me. I tell you, he washed the dishes. He cleaned the house. I did absolutely nothing. But after a while, I felt very, very strange. And I said to my son, something's not right. So I went to my doctor and I was sitting there shaking. And he said, you know one thing? I think you're suffering with anxiety and depression. And I was shaking like that. He said, I'm going to give you some pills to take. And I want you to take these pills. And after a while, you'll be able to get off them. Well, he gave me this pill called Lorazepam. I was to take them twice a day. That didn't help me. I was crying. I didn't know what to do. So he said, I'm going to send you to Shepherd Pratt. He sent me to Shepherd Pratt. And then they gave me Lexapro. Mm. I took that. I was still nervous. I didn't know what to do. I, I couldn't put my clothes on. I couldn't do anything. But then while I was there, the doctor said, you did a lot of exercising. Why don't you go out and exercise again? I said, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. She says, I think that will help you. Well, I got up this particular morning and I had a friend and she walked with me. When I started walking, not right away, I started feeling differently. I said to her, gee, I don't feel nervous now. I just feel so different. So we walked every day. Then finally, my doctor said, start lifting weights again. I started lifting weights again. And I want you to know the good Lord helped me. When I started lifting the weights and combining the walking together, don't you know, I feel so, so much better. I feel like the whole earth. And I tell everyone, I don't hide the fact that I have anxiety and depression, but it doesn't bother me. I can still get up and do the things that I do. But if I were to sit home and not do anything, that would attack me again. And I don't want that feeling ever, ever again. Now, when you start taking these pills, don't think that you can just say, I'm not going to take the pill. It's a certain way mm -hmm. time Thank that you. you have to get all these pills because your system has become so acclimated to it mm -hmm. that it is difficult. Am I not correct about that? Yes, ma'am, you are. Thank you so much for saying that. Because you can't just jump off them. You have to wean off. And I am weaning off of some of these pills now. And I really feel 100% better. 
And I want everybody to know that I am not perfect. Mm -hmm. I have problems too. And the people that I know who have come to me and have told me that they have the same thing, well, they are working and exercising and somehow or another, it's helping them also. But like I said, it doesn't go away that quick. No, we have to still keep on exercising. And then you have to make certain that the food that you're eating is healthy. And then that's how it goes. Yes. I am very, very happy. And I had promised my sister and my husband that I would make certain that I would help as many people as I could to live a healthy, happy, positive, confident lifestyle by number one, exercising. But no, not that's not number one. Number one is prayer. You have to pray day in and day out. Number two, exercising by the what I mean, getting out and walking. I'm not saying that you have to walk 10, 15, or 20 miles in the beginning because you've got to get the body accustomed to that. Then lift your weight. Mm -hmm. Then have some type of mantra that you will that will keep you doing your exercises. And this mantra keeps me on the go. And then, as I mentioned earlier, drink your water. Yes, yes. So I want you to know that I am not perfect. I do have problems, but God is with me morning, noon, and night. And that's why I get up say my prayers, sing my songs, and I love to go to church, and I love to sing in the church choir, and I also sing solos. It's a joy for me to do those things. I hope I answered the question. You did. You did a beautiful job of answering that. I just wanted people to fully um, to know Ernestine Shepherd, not just the iconic bodybuilder. I wanted them to know the person that I know, okay? The sweet, lovable, giving person that I know. Um, you do have problems, okay? It's okay to say, hey, Miss Ernestine, how's your day today? Instead of, hey, what can, what can you do for me? You know, just see how my day is. Um, Arnisha, do you want to touch on that a little bit, the psychological aspects of getting older stages and things that, you know, they go through that we're going to be going through? That we'll be going through, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so what we know is between 2015 and 2020, 2050, the elderly population will double. Yes. And about 12 to 22 percent of them will have mental health and neurological disorders, and oftentimes they are overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's overlooked because they think it's just health problems. It comes with age, right? Okay. Um, and that's not always true. So we forget to ask those big questions. And that big question: How are you? Mm -hmm. What have what events have happened in your life? What do you feel like you're struggling with? Mm -hmm. um, and anxiety and depression is something that as we get older, we start experiencing more loss. We have less days ahead of us than we do, you know, mm -hmm. behind us, right? Yeah. And so we have to remember that anxiety and depression are a real thing amongst our senior community. And, and taking the time... And, you know, Miss Ernie, you are so right when you say, like, the universe has everything we need. And um, I always tell people that because they're like, you know, 
I don't want to get out of bed. I was just like, just let the sun hit your face. Mm -hmm. um, just go out a little bit. Just go for a walk and you will be surprised as what the universe has to offer us. Um, and you're right. If you are on medication, we're not saying don't take your medication. Mm -hmm. saying, if you feel like you don't want to be on the medication, then you have to be able to supplement with something else. And our body has the natural things it needs to heal. Mm -hmm. We have to first move that body and, and, you know, ignite those things within our body so that it can heal. And we heal both mentally and physically together. So I like when Ms. Ernie said, you know, we, I'm coming off my medication, talking with my doctor, making sure I have a regimen. I'm also making sure I do these things that help to decrease the anxiety and depression. Absolutely. And recognizing what will take me back to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we have another question for you, Marnestein. It's from um, Miss Christine Destefano again. But after we answer, I mean, ask this question, um, we have some people in the audience that want to, they want to see if this little 86 year old lady can do a couple of push ups. They don't believe that you can do these push ups, um, Ma. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> so Ms. Stefano, she wants to know how many grams of protein do you consume a day? Um, look on that uh, bigger can in there. And how many hours do you work out a day? And do you oh, work out every goodness. day? Do you ever take a rest day? No. It's 20 grams of protein in uh, each glass I drink. Yes. Uh -huh. So, and I drink it four times. So that's, uh, I get like um, 80 grams of protein. Oh yeah, and 80 plus because um, the other food that I eat. Mm-hmm. So again, do you ever take a rest day, Ma? No, Sunday. I well, not really on Sunday because I walk. You Sunday. still walk, yeah. I'm like, I've seen. Look, you walk with us sometime on Sunday. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I tell you, I love it. All mm. right. So, do you think that you can give them a little demonstration of your little push-ups that you do? I mean, you know what I was thinking. I wanted to show them. Um, just a few, um, like doing shoulder press. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Okay. Oh, that and, sounds beautiful. And I'm going to use a lighter one so that, um, do they have, they don't have any weights there, but I'm going to show you a few little I ones. wish they did. They knew, they knew you were going to be on the show tonight. <laughs> do something. Do you have some weights? <laughs> These are these are just uh um, have my kettlebell. <laughs> okay. All right. So when you're doing your shoulders, look at those arms. See that? Uh -huh. you lift it up. Can you push it back, son? Push you back. Push me back. Yes, push yeah. me back. Have, you have it there. Mm -hmm. And you come here and here and here and here. And here and there. Now let me show you a bicep. I'm using baby weights. Okay, can you push that back so she can see? Me? Back up. Back up. It's easier for you to back up. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Okay. Now, pull the chair up a little bit. Pull it up. There now, you can you see? Perfect. Five. One, two, three. Four. Can you give us a side view, Mama? This way? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. There you go. One. Yes. Three. Two, three. Four. Mm. Five. Six. Who says you can't have muscles at 86? Eight. Nine. Beautiful. And ten. Yes. And ten, uh, I, I just enjoy working out it's so much fun and then um it's one that i like to show let me do this 
This one, let's see if I can do it on this floor here. What are you trying to do? I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get on the floor. I have them doing this. Okay, hold on. Where are you going to? I'm just gonna lie down here on the floor. Okay. Let's see if I can get them to do it. If I can get it down to you. I'm gonna have to just tilt the computer. Whoops. Okay. She's doing a bicycle. Oh man. Oh man. Okay, Ernestine. She's showing off. <laughs> yes, man. Oh man. At 86. Oh my God. Yeah, that's it. The bicycle. Yes, she is. No, I don't think any of my guests are gonna be doing that tonight, Ma. No man. <laughs> Not the high one at that. And that was pretty high. She pushed she pushed her, her glutes up there. Yes, she did. That was amazing. So, look, uh, anyone in the crowd, uh, um, are they doing that? <laughs> Any of my viewers? <laughs> that was amazing. She is amazing. So, as she's getting up, we can see that at the age of 86, okay, you still can have muscle, all right, at the age of 86. So my question to my viewers, I'm, I know I don't have anyone on here older than Ernestine Shepard. My question to you is, what is your excuse for yeah, not having your muscles? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. What is your excuse? Uh, I know, Arnisha, Arnisha, what is, I know, don't scratch your head, boo. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> the excuse for not moving, okay? Miss Ernestine mm -hmm. Shepard, she has classes that are online, okay? For people that want to be a part of her class. And if you don't know how to get in touch with her class, she has a website. And I'm going to post her website here to where you guys can get on her website. And you should be able, and you can get on her website. And the classes are on her website too, right, um, Drea? Yeah, she, you can register on the website. Yes, you can go to her website. Her website is right here. You guys should be able to register for, register for her classes. They are every yes. Saturday between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m. Okay, Eastern time. Eastern, Eastern time. Eastern yes. time. Because she lives in Baltimore, Maryland. Drea, can you also go get her book as well? Um, Ready. Yes. Can you bring that all the way up to the front? Yep, all go. the way to the front. You can also get her book as well. This book talks about her whole entire life. It talks about her, her sister, okay? How her sister encouraged her. Um, they took a bet, or it, I think it was a bet, about a bikini contest. Was it a bikini <laughs> contest, Mama? We were going to a swimming pool. Oh, okay. Tell us about that. And, okay. My husband was the chairman of the trustee board at church. And they always had picnics during the summer. So he told Velvet and me that uh, to go get bathing suits and come go to the church picnic. Well, we went to the store to purchase the suits. Velvet looked over at me and started laughing. And I said, well, you're not looking so good yourself. <laughs> she said, Let's take these suits off. We're not going to get in the water. So we took the suits off, but we went to the picnic and we heard some ladies talking, stating that they had gone to Coppin College to exercise there. So within a matter of two weeks, Velvet and I went there and um, they started off with um, aerobics. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the instructor started uh, lifting, teaching us to lift weights. And that's how we got started. So do you want to give us and tell us a little bit about your sister, Velma? Oh, I don't mind telling you. Uh, what happened was she was so strong. She had nice muscles and everything. But... I didn't because I didn't want to do anything. I, I was lazy. And then when I found out 
that she was asked to go out and make motivational speeches and uh, oh, just go everywhere. I got jealous. And she said, if you want this joy that I'm having, you better get busy. So I wanted the joy that she was having. So I got busy. So who's older, you are Velvet. Would you say, baby? Velvet. Who's older, you are you are Velvet. Velvet was just a year older than me. Oh, okay. She would be eighty-seven now. Okay. So anyway, um, gee, I I I got myself together. And then next thing I knew, we were exercising. So then finally, Velva came to me one day and she said, I'm having such a terrible headache. I don't know why my head aches like that. I said, well, maybe it's because you have your braid to keep because we can take the rubber band and twist it real tight to hold it there, you know? So I said, open that rubber band and don't wear it that tight. So she opened it, but she still had a headache. Mm -hmm. The next time she told me that she couldn't see out of one eye. And I said, what is that all about? She says, I don't know, but I'll be all right. And then the next time she said, it felt like water was running in her ears. So I said, I've had enough of this. We're going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So my parents got there to her house before I did and took her to the hospital. When I got there, they hadn't even waited on her. So I said, let's leave this hospital. And we went to St. Agnes Hospital. Mm -hmm. We got there and I asked her, did she want a wheelchair? She said, no. She walked in. She told them what the problem was. And we were sitting in the waiting room. They came out, the doctor came out and said, your sister and your daughter has had a brain aneurysm and it has already burst. Mm. And what she felt, the water running in her ear was the blood from the aneurysm. The headache was from the aneurysm. Mm -hmm. From the eye, where she couldn't use her hands, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. All of that was because of the aneurysm. Mm -hmm. She died right then and there. But before she died, she said, I want you to continue what we started. I want you, she said the same thing my husband said, to help as many people as you can to live a healthy, happy, positive, confident lifestyle. And she said, by prayer first and then along with the eating. I screamed and cried. I didn't know what to do. But I, she wanted to be cremated. So... She was cremated. I had enough energy to get up and sing at the church, the Lord's Prayer by Gates. And after I sang the Lord's Prayer by Gates and the funeral was over, I was the meanest, nastiest, ugliest person that you would ever want to meet because I couldn't understand how God could take a good person away and leave me here who was bad. And then I made myself judge and jury. And I looked around at everybody else. And I said, and he let the rest of these bums stay here. Hmm. Well, I ended up, I always did something. I ended up saying bad words, fussing with people, just wouldn't do anything. But one night I went to sleep and she came to me in a dream. She said, get up and do what I asked you to do. You're not doing what I asked you to do. I sat up in the bed and I looked around. 
I didn't see anyone. I said, that couldn't have been anyone. Mm -hmm. I laid back down. And again, she came to me. Well, the next day, I still didn't do anything. A week went by. And I happened to be walking down the street. And I saw this church where they were having a revival. Well, I said, I'm going to go into this church. And if these people get on my nerves, I'm going to get up and walk out of this church. Mm -hmm. I went into the church and I sat on the very back pew. And I always wore a ring on my fingers. And the preacher was preaching and I put my hand on the back seat. I moved the other hand, I put it on the back seat. After a while, the organist started playing this song that I would sing all of the time. And the words to that song was, here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling through the night. I will go, Lord, where you lead me. I will hold you people in my heart. Something I had never done in my life. I jumped up. I disrupted the service. And I said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Restore to me the joy of each new day. Give me back the love that I once had for you and never ever let me slip away. Then I knew that I was going to do what Velvet wanted me to do. I knew this guy named Ray and I asked him to help me. He trained me. He took me to bodybuilding shows. He took me to a show where Yanni Schamberger, my manager, who wasn't my manager at the time, saw me sitting in the audience. And he said, I would like to ask you, would you present the trophies to my winners? I said, yes. He said, I know you are a bodybuilder. I said, no, I've never competed in a show before. So I presented the trophies to the people. And then I asked him, would he train me? And he said, yes, I'm going to take you on a long journey and you have to do everything that I tell you. And when you do that, then I will put you in my show. I did everything that he told me. And I was 71 years of age when I did my first show. People in that show were younger than me. But God was with me. I came in first place. That's beautiful. And then next we heard from the people from the Guinness Book of World Records. And they wanted me to come to Rome to get my trophy and my pictures. I went to Rome and that's when I got my trophies and all the things that I needed to have to become the oldest female competitive bodybuilder in the world. And that's my story. So you mentioned um, Yanni Stromberg. Uh, are you available to travel and go other places for shows, for motivational speaking? If someone wanted to um, request your services, I did put Yanni's information up here along with his um, telephone number. Um, is that appropriate to say to contact your manager if um, anyone wanted to have Ernestine Shepherd? to come out and maybe do like a motivational speaking, um, you are available for travel. 
Oh my goodness, yes. I just got back from Dallas. That was wonderful. And then on the 4th and 5th of November, I'm going to uh, North Carolina. And I travel all over. And I meet so many wonderful people. And I don't care because of this pandemic, I will have my mask on and I will hug everyone there because that's so important to me. I want people to know that I love them and I care for them. And I truly, truly do. So if anyone wants me to travel to their state or church or whatever, I go to churches. Oh my goodness, I would love to do that. Just wonderful. It someone really is. Just, I'm sorry, someone just asked, where in North Carolina would you be? I think we have someone that's here from North Carolina. Maybe they'll meet you there. <laughs> my phone. Where's my phone? I can tell you. Yes, yes, yes. Tell you. So um, I don't know if I asked you or not, but there is a Baltimore running festival this weekend. Are you running in that this weekend? Yes, I am. And how many miles are you? You're 86 years old, little lady. How many miles are you running? I'm not running that many this year because I haven't had time to really practice it like I normally do. I'm doing the 10K. That's 6.2 miles. Well, you're still running six miles. <laughs> Ar Ar Arnissa, um, how many miles are you running? That would be a big zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, Mother Ernestine, you will be beating the person sitting on the couch. I'm yes, always in competition with that person sitting on the couch. Whenever I run, I always post that I'm in competition with the person that's sitting on the couch. Um, it's a straight win for me every time. So, I'm beating you, Arnisha, every yeah, time. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to find the only with. person I'm in competition with. Oh, I tell you, it's when I get out there, I just have such a wonderful time. I do too. I will be out there with you, Ma. I will oh, be more on a con. I will be doing the 5K. Then I will be turning around and doing a half marathon after that. I did the half marathon. Let me see. When was it? Uh, three months ago. I, it was, who was it with Dred when I did the half marathon? Oh, it was like three years ago. Oh, I did it in. You did the Drew Hill Park one. I did the one for Drew Hill Park. Yep. Yeah. I sure did. Sure did. And it August was fun. Second, you did Drew Hill Park. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm trying to find the way I'm going to be. Oh, MJ. So, so inspirational. inspirational. Yes, three months ago. Yeah, you heard her. I thought she was going to say three years. No, three right. months ago. Ma, August two second. To ask you, I know you said that if anybody asks any questions, doesn't matter how personal, that you will answer the question. And I'm also oh, sure. embarrassed to ask, ask the question. They want to know, do people that are older, do they still have sex? <laughs> well... Do you know, do you know that when I was in my 30s sorry, and uh, my husband and I were just having a ball and it was so wonderful. So I went to my mother and I said, mom, when people get old, do they still have sex? Do you know what my mother told me? What was that? She said, just keep on living and you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect answer. That's I'm, gonna that. That. I'm not digging anymore. <laughs> <laughs> keep on living and you'll find I out. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So did you find out where in North Carolina? Well, I, I stopped looking and I was looking for answering you. Uh, I had uh, an enjoyable night. This has been an uh, absolute treat. 
and we are coming up almost to the end of everything but i just want everyone to know that if you uh, she's looking for where she's going to be at in north carolina um uh, my ernestine she does work out um here in baltimore she is in baltimore maryland okay she works out at lock raven boulevard um she works there. She gets there at 6 30. Ask me how I know. Because she called me one day as I was all <laughs> yeah. running at five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Ernestine Shepherd, Ma? She's like, baby, did I call you by accident? Yeah. She said, I'm sorry. I'm on my way to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on my way to go run. So I'm like, she's up when I'm up, okay? So she says she gets up at three. So she's at Lock Raven, okay? Lock Raven. Um, and she gets there. She does her walk with a lot of women between the hours of seven and nine. From at nine, from nine to 10, she does her strength training class. So if you're not able to do the walk with her, then you can do the strength training class with her. And that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, she's at Randallstown. And she does um, weightlifting between the hours of 7 and 8.30. And that's where she does the weightlifting and she demonstrates with people, for people. And then she takes turns and let the other people lift weights as well. As she's monitoring you and making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to, making sure that everyone is safe. So if you guys are interested in um, working out with her, um, I think that, uh, do they have to pay for that, Ma? Or do they um, just pay for the gym membership or how does that work? Well, what happens if they just want to come in? I think it's like $5, $5. It doesn't get any better than that $5 for your health. I mean, people need to learn to start investing in your health. People will invest in Golden Corral. They will invest in the, the, the Chinese buffet. They will invest in um, the coach bag, the Gucci, buffet, but they will no. not invest in their own health. And that's what I do not understand. They will not invest in a personal trainer. They will not invest in buying the better foods to eat. They will not invest in those things, but they will invest in everything that will cripple mm -hmm. them as they get older. Okay. Oh, now, now, Shay, where yeah. I'm going is Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh. Okay, Cynthia, she said Charlotte, North Carolina. Let me know if that's somewhere that is near you because she will be there November. You said fourth, Mama? Fourth and fifth. Yes, November 4th and 5th. And where are you going to be at? I don't have that on here yet, but what I will do, I will get, um, let you know where I'm going to be. I'm doing something for United Health. I can get that information for you. Well, Miss Cynthia said that she's in Charlotte, and she's like, wherever you're at. Whoa, Cynthia, I would love to see you. Oh, Cynthia said she's coming <laughs> with yeah, her entourage. Give, you want me to give Cynthia my phone number? Uh, you know what? I don't want you to give your number out. I will contact Cynthia myself, and then I will be the liaison that will mediate this stuff between you and Cynthia, okay? Oh, because I want to see her. Well, you know what? I will make sure that happens. All right. I will okay. make sure that you see her. I will I promise you. Cynthia, she loves people. All right. Cynthia's like contact via Shay. Okay. She already put that in the in the chat, Mama. Okay. And right. then I had I did find the egg thing, but I lost it again. Oh, okay. Also, another thing, if people want to work out with her that do not live in the state of Maryland, she has a website. I'm going to post it here, okay? You guys can go to her official website, officialernieshepherd.com. Official Ernie. Yeah, yeah, make sure I put that in there. You got it. You got it. You guys can register for her classes every Saturday from the hours of three and four, okay? Don't let this older lady show you young people off, okay? She can't hurt you. You're right. <laughs> oh my God. And the phone number for the egg company is, you have a pen? I can type it in. Hold on, Mama. I'll put it in the banner. Give me one second. I'll type it in the banner. Yep, I'm ready for you. 714-921-5500. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, and that's the and number. Tell them Ernestine Shepherd told them to call. All right, that's not like a plan to me. 
So I'm typing this in for you guys. If you guys are interested in, there we go. There's the number. And let them know that Ernestine Shepherd sent you. All right. You guys have a connection now. They know her. Everyone knows I've her. I've had so much fun with everybody. And I I'm, can't. It's no way that I can sometimes get the people to speak, that I can hear them speak. I wish I could, Mom. I'm not that advanced yet, but I, I have been posting all of the questions up here. I don't know if you were able to see the questions. Yes, I do see. I do. Yes, yes. yes. So I was able to post the questions and the thank yous and everything else that everyone was posted. They are very happy that... Um, you were able to come out and share a bit of Ernestine Shepherd because this was a side of them that they did not know about. Oh, I hope they enjoyed everything. I've enjoyed being with all of you. And, and so, have, oh, God. Star right. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, that's beautiful. And just let them know that age is what? Age is nothing but a number. And you can give it. Absolutely. So I'm looking for you guys to um, to register for her online classes, number one, okay? Because as you get older, you start to lose elasticity in your skin. But as you can see, her skin is tight as anything. Again, like I said, she's 86, all right? But do understand that you do lose elasticity in your skin. But the reason why her skin is so tight is because, number one, she eats right. She doesn't eat at McDonald's. She doesn't eat at the Golden Corral. No. No. She doesn't eat any of those things. She doesn't eat cookies and cakes and ice creams all day, every day. Potato chips. Ma doesn't eat any of those. She's very particular about what she puts into her body because she knows that she's getting older. And all of those things are just going to just drag her body down. Okay, because as you get older and you start to lose elasticity, your skin starts to hang. So as you're putting on that weight, those fat, um, the fat has to pocket somewhere. So where is it going to pocket at? It's going to pocket here. It's going to pocket here. It's going to pocket. It pockets everywhere. So be very mindful of the food that you eat. Be very mindful of your inactivity that you do. Get up and move. It just You just got to move. All right. You just have to take that initiative to make that first step. And then the next day, you got to make that second step. The third day, you just got to keep making my tell them you just got to keep making those steps to move. OK, that is all you have to do. I see a question here. OK, foot problems here. So curious about what sneakers she runs in. Ma, what kind of sneakers do you use? Because I'm, okay, well, I'm glad I'm glad that Christine put that there. Christine, I have very, very flat feet and I over pronate. I wear the tennis shoes from New Balance. Um, they have the art in them and um, it's New Balance 1540 V2. They run like $169. And then with your tennis shoes, when you start running or walking, you get two pair of tennis shoes because you alternate with them. And then you, after you've worn them for so many months, then you do no, no longer walk or run in them because the usefulness of them is over. You can just use them just to walk around the house, but not being outside. Okay. That was an excellent question. All right. So I think that we are about done with our show tonight. We kind of went over a little bit, which I kind of knew that was going to happen. We have I've enjoyed this. We have one more good shoes to wear. New Balance are so good for shock absorbency. Okay, I think that is about it for our show. Christine says, thank you, Ma. So we want to tell everybody thank you um, for um, being a part of our show. We want to tell everyone thank you for all of the questions. Again, if anyone wants to purchase um, 
our song, Miss Ernestine's song, Determined, Disciplined to be Fit. You guys can purchase the song from Romley.com. Um, you go to the three bars. Once you go to the three bars, you click on the store and look for Determined, Dedicated, Disciplined to be Fit, okay? And just download the song. Like I said, I have it in my players list. And I listen to that now. And I think it's so cute. And she said, move your butt. <laughs> I'm like, are you talking to me? <laughs> and I'm running as I'm listening to her talk to me in the song. And it's so adorable. So I'm going to play that one more time before we leave off the show. I'm going to end the show with that being played, OK? <laughs> Again, if you guys want to have um, Mother Ernestine come out and do a motivational speaking or anything of that sort, this is her manager, um, Yanni St um, Schamberg. This is his telephone number. Please invite her out. She is such a wonderful soul. And yes, you have to get your shirt. All right. Determined, discipline, uh, determined, mm -hmm. discipline, and uh, I mean, dedicated, discipline. Dedicated, to be discipline to be I know, Dre, girl, I've been up since four o'clock this morning. My and it has her signature on it. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yes. So, yes, you guys have to invite her out to be a part of any type of function that you guys are doing. I would love that. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. if you tell guys her, tell sorry. her the size and color. When you and order your shirt, tell her size and color. It comes in an array of colors. Absolutely, absolutely. If you want to order the shirt, you go to her official website, which I'm putting here um, on the screen right now. You can order her book. You can order the shirt. You can register for her classes. Check out her website. It is absolutely beautiful. Whoever did that website, they did a marvelous job. Thank you. Um, capturing everything, her beauty, her her must. I mean, everything. They captured everything that was be that's beautiful on this little lady. Okay, so Betty Fenner Original did the website. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, her designer. That's the lady who makes my clothes. That's her designer. Absolutely, just beautiful and. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that is down here. We got the egg company. Uh, I think I posted that as well. We also want to give a special thank you um, to our initiative for coming out. We also have our disclaimer that we always post. But anyone that's looking for a therapist, we have um, our Nisha's information here that I definitely want to put here as well. I'm looking for your information, our Nisha. Give me one second, love. All right. But yes, we definitely have our therapist here. Anisha, do you just want to talk to people and just let them know what you do as I'm looking for your information? As always, Shay, it is always a pleasure being on your show. Thank you for having me again. Um, but I am a licensed clinical professional counselor um, and I do practice with mental health in the Baltimore area. Um, and I think that you have my number, but if you find it, no worries. I am on psychology today. All right. Thank you so much. I Beautiful. definitely am looking for that love, but I don't see it. I'm not even going to post my stuff. Everybody know who I am. All right. We'll just do that on the next show. Um, we still have some more comments down here for you, mom. I definitely want to post that. Everybody oh. says, I love you. Uh, we have Sakitia Berry. Really good show. Information was great. Um, we have Latanya Sellers that says, thank you, Miss Ernestine. Oh. Um, and also please put her website in the chat. So I have to do that before I leave tonight. So before we leave, we have to play that song just one more time. <laughs> we are leaving off and we are going to bid everyone a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful good night. My Ernestine, is there any last words you want to give to the crowd tonight before we leave? I just want to tell them the same thing that I tell everyone for beautiful eyes. Always look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, only speak words of kindness. For poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never, ever alone. And all of you, you are my sunshine and all of you make me very, very happy. Have a pleasant night. All right, thank you so much, my Ernestine. And we're gonna take the show out playing my Ernestine song. Dedicated, determined, disciplined, to be fit. 
All right, guys. And we thank you, my Ernestine. You are a complete joy. Um, I cannot. Hi, this is Earth. I swear I feel like she's talking to me as I'm running. Move it. All right. I'm running. Move it. I'll be playing it while I'm out there. You all right? You're doing it. She said, you all right? I'm like, no, I'm not. I can barely breathe. <laughs> Yes, both ladies. Beautiful. Why put your website in the um, chat? I'm a drill sergeant. <laughs> what you say? So you sound like a drill sergeant. Motivation to not know what it is, okay? <laughs> you said you work. <laughs> <laughs> 